Hello and welcome to this AE Basics tutorial, which is our second tutorial looking at shape layers. So far we've just noticed the difference between a shape layer and a mask, and now I want to show you some of the tools that are available to us in shape layers, and also some of the incredible things you can do, particularly with the star tool. So I'm going to delete what I've created in this composition so far, just select both layers and hit delete. And I'm going to select one of the shape layer tools here. So let's look at the ellipse tool, click on the ellipse tool, and I'm going to draw an ellipse in this particular composition. So I'm just going to click and draw. Now the same rules apply. If I hold the shift key, I'm always going to be drawing a perfect circle. If I hold the control or the command key, I'm going to be drawing from the center, from the place that I started to draw. If I hold the space bar, I can move the item around as I draw. And if I hold the Alt or Option key, I'm going to be drawing with just an outline. All of those rules still apply as you draw shape layers and any combination of them. So for instance, if I hold Shift and Alt on my system, I'm going to be drawing an outline, but it's always going to be a perfect circle. And again, if I hold the space bar, I can move things around to wherever you want them to be. So I'm just going to draw something that pretty much fills the screen, put it up a bit, something like that. Okay, now. I've created a shape layer, it's called shape layer 1, and as we looked before, we can open up ellipse 1, and we have got things called path, stroke, and fill. So basically we can animate the stroke and the fill if we want to, and do some pretty cool things, which I'll show a bit more later on. And we have the transforms, which means I can do things such as skew, which I can't do under normal circumstances, and of course skew axis, which I can play around with, but I'm just going to reset both of those because what I want to show you are the tools up here. Now the first one we have here is just a button telling us that the tools here are presently going to create shapes. The second button is showing us that tools will create masks. And if I click on there and I click, I'm actually creating a mask on my shape layer. Okay, so these buttons saying, what do you want the tools to do? Do you actually want them to create masks or do you want them to create shapes? I obviously don't actually want to create a mask because I'm going to do Control Z, but you can toggle between your tools for shapes and then if you've created your shapes you can still then apply a mask if you want to. So that's what those two buttons are about. But now we're going to click on the word fill. We've actually changed the fill colour before. If you click on the word fill you'll see that you've got some options. You've got the option to have no fill whatsoever. So perhaps you want something that's just going to be a pure stroke and I actually use that quite a lot myself. Then you've got to have a solid fill which is what we've got at the moment. We've got one that says linear gradient and one that says radial gradient. And then we have blend modes and opacity over here. It says preview. So at the moment I have created a radial gradient and I'm going to click OK. Now, if I want to get access to the radial gradient tools, I actually need to go back to my selection tool. And when I've gone back to my selection tool, these are the items that can help me to adjust my gradient. So I can pull this one out, say all the way to the edge, and then if I want to, I can choose the other side and pull that all the way across, which is the center of the white. Now I've got a sort of a gradient where it's black one side and white the other. Now with this item still selected, I can also increase, if I like, the size of the stroke width, just increase that. But also, if you click on the word stroke, you'll see that you have the same option. So you can have no stroke, a solid stroke, which we have at the moment, a linear gradient, and again, a radial gradient. So I'm going to choose a radial gradient for the stroke and I'm going to click OK. Go back to my arrow tool and you'll see that in the middle it might be a little bit difficult to see, but you can see I've actually got the same options I had before. This time, however, I'm going to take them in the opposite direction. So I'm going to take this one to this side, and I'm going to take this middle one to this side. And by doing that, I have created something, if I just click away, created something that actually looks kind of like a button. If I turn off my transparency grid, you'll see it better there. One way or the other, it's hard to see. But you see we've got something that's got almost depth to it, almost looks 3D. And if I go back to the shape layer itself, if I increase the size of the stroke, you'll see that you can change how it looks and how it feels. 
And of course, what you could do with an item like this is select the layer and duplicate it, which is Command or Control D, and hit S for scale, and scale the whole thing down. And if you wanted to, you could even flip it. So if I select the layer, right click on the layer, and go Transform Flip Horizontal, it's not quite aligned, so I would need to align it. But you can get quite an interesting look and create an item that could be a button, or if these were circular, that could be a speaker, or it could be a megaphone. All kinds of bits and pieces just by playing with the fill and the stroke. Now, of course, they don't have to be grey. So if we go back to layer one, I'm just going to turn off the visibility for layer two. Now what I want to do is actually have a little look at the gradient itself. So this time I'm going to look at layer 1, and I'm not going to click on the word fill, but on the colour swatch beside it. And you'll see here is the colour swatch. I'm just going to move it to one side to start off with. And you can see it's giving me a colour stop for the white and a colour stop for the black. Now of course I can change that. So if I click the white colour stop, I can say make it a red. And if I click on the black one, I can make it say a cyan. Or maybe a dark blue. And you can see that that has changed how the colour swatch looks. And of course I can move these colour stops around. So I can pull the blue colour stop down so that I'm making the gradient concentrate this end. Or alternatively, I can do it the other way. I can pull the colour stop the other way and make it concentrate the other. And you'll see that there is a midpoint gamma slider, if you like, in the middle where we can actually achieve the same thing whilst keeping quite a gentle change. Now also, if I want to, I can just click somewhere else and add another colour swatch and perhaps change that colour in the middle. And I can add another one, say, here and make it a different colour as well. And I can create some pretty elaborate colour shapes just by clicking and adding colour swatches. And I could, for instance, click another one here and make that one completely black. And then if I pull the other versions very close to it, I can create some really interesting and very, very tight lines. Now this is just playing with the fill. If I want to, I can do the same with the stroke. And I'm gonna click OK. And all of a sudden I've created something that looks very different and very dramatic just by playing with the fill and making sure it was on a radial gradient and then opening up the gradient and having a really good play with that. Now that's just playing with the fill of these items. What if we can also change how the items look? Now this time I'm going to choose something completely different. So I'm just going to turn off this layer and scroll it up. And I'm going to go from an ellipse tool all the way down to the star tool. And I'm going to create a star. In fact, I'm going to take my fill to nothing. So I'm going to have no fill. And I'm going to take my stroke to a solid color. And I'm going to make the solid color, well, it can be red. And I'm just with nothing selected, I'm just going to click and drag in here and create a star. I think perhaps, I'm just holding the space bar to move it around. I think perhaps the um, overall width of that stroke is too much. So I'm just going to take the 26 and change it down just a bit. There we go. And if we want to, we can turn off the transparency grid and get a better look at it. So now I have created a star. And it's shape layer 3. In fact, I'm going to rename it this time. I'm just going to select shape layer 3, hit return on my keyboard and call it my poly star hit return and I'm going to delete my other layers just so that we don't get confused there's my poly star now I'm going to open up the poly star and I'm going to open up poly star path and when I open up poly star path I suddenly have a bunch of options that I didn't have before notice of course that all of these options are animatable because they have stopwatches so for instance I can change the number of points I can change the position and the rotation, great, we know we can do those, but inner radius and outer radius, so inner radius, outer radius, also the inner roundness, so I can go negative on the inner roundness, or I can go positive on the inner roundness, and outer roundness, so I can go positive on the outer roundness, or negative on the outer roundness, and suddenly I've got the option to create some incredible wild, wacky and different shapes simply by playing with these items. And these shapes can become evolving shapes, going from one thing to another simply by using the animation properties for the Polystar path. We haven't done anything complicated yet, we've just opened up the Polystar path and we've played around with the points, we know we can change the position, we can even change the rotation, 
and we've changed the inner outer radius inner outer roundness now not only can we do all of that we can also change the stroke if you open up stroke you'll notice that we can change the color and it has a stopwatch next to it so if I go back to the beginning here and I click the stopwatch I'm going to go forward one second and I'm going to click on the color swatch and I'm going to go to blue and then I'm going to go forward to two seconds and I'm going to click the swatch and I'm going to go to green and then I'm going to go forward another second and say make it yellow you get the idea just moving through it and changing the actual color of these things and now when I go through my composition I have a changing color which is animated all the way through and of course if this was evolving and changing and moving it would look great but hang on a second what's this one down here that says dashes can't open it up with the twirly but there is a plus so if I click plus suddenly the item is covered in dashes and I can change the size of the dashes and then a really interesting parameter that is well worth you getting used to understanding is something called offset now offset is going to move these points along I'm going to go back to my pointer tool here if I offset these items I'm not going to change their size or their scale I'm simply going to offset their position around this shape so as I start to pull offset through I start to have some incredible shapes that are moving and changing and doing all kinds of other bits and pieces now these are just some of the tools that we have for creating really interesting shapes in After Effects I would encourage you to play around with these to enjoy them to look at all the different options you'll get inside particularly the Polystar as well as bearing in mind that of course you can still go down and you can skew it and you can change the skew axis and all kinds of bits and pieces have a play with these also one other little note when it comes to the inner roundness and the outer roundness if you want to really take these out to incredible values if you hold the shift key you will go very big very quickly okay so the shift key will allow you to change the value very fast if you hold the control or the command key it will allow you to change the values a tiny bit at a time so for big movements and big changes hold the shift key and it'll allow you to move things out as quickly as you like but for small changes when you want to be absolutely precise hold the control or the command key and then it will allow you to move it just a little bit at a time now in the next tutorial we're going to see an even more powerful option and that's found up here at the top where it says add and we're going to be able to add all kinds of effectors or animators to make our shape layers do some incredible things my name's Andrew Davis. I hope to see you in the next tutorial and thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.